Take a look at the poster. The Patriotic Fund will care for you. How much will you give? Pretty poignant, really, because today is all about the Patriotic Fund. Yeah, Newark's Patriotic Fund. We get to meet Keith Gurley, one of the, uh, the co-founders. See you in a bit. Good morning. Today's podcast is all about the Patriotic Fund, Newark's Patriotic Fund. And today we're going to be talking to uh, Keith Gurley, one of the uh, original founders. Keith, good morning. Good morning. Right, so... Before we get into all this, yeah. our listeners, they like to know a little bit about your background and everything else. So where did, um, where did you, you start off? Where did, where did you first live? Nottingham lad, St. Anne's, um, council house kid, basically. Um, went through the normal comprehensive um, system, Manvers, he says, with a smile on his face. It was a bit of a, bit of a school, um, but a good school, really, for, uh, for the kind of kids that were there, like me. Uh, I then got a job as an apprentice print finisher at a company called Howitz in, in Old Baseford, who had now moved to um, Kirkby and Ashford, I think, mm. uh, so it's still going, a uh, family-run uh, business. And then halfway through my five-year apprenticeship, I decided that um, it wasn't for me. Basically, a bloke named Alf changed my life. And um, I was, when you're an apprentice, you, you got all sorts of different machines, and I'm on this big machine where you needed, in them days, a more manual. Yeah, yeah. And they had these big pieces of card that you had to pick up. He was on one side, I was on the other, and you fed it into this drum that had these grippers on. And the grippers would grab the card, so you had to get them into the gripper, and then they'd go round through a vat of varnish and come out the other end. Oh, right. Yeah, so it was basically a varnishing card. If you got it wrong and the vat and the vat and the uh, drum went round in the vat, you'd have to clean it all off and get oh. get a bollocking, you see. So anyway, this was in the uh, 70s and you could smoke in factories in them days, round varnish. Varnish. Round yeah. varnish. <laughs> and, and this bloke is about six foot four, six foot five, had a really big hook nose, massive hook nose, and he was smoking a tip of cigarette. So there's me, you know, concentrating like mad, picking the card up, and he's just going, you know, like, having a fag while he's doing it and then it got to the point where the cigarette was right to the end so he couldn't get hold of it with his with his fingers and I'm just fixated on him smoking a cigarette <laughs> wonder, wonder, wondering what he's going to do now and it sort of just started to burn his lips I think and he spat it out and stood on it you see and then a red light uh, well not a red light a light went on in my head thinking there's no way I want to end up like Elf yeah and, and it, it just so happened at that particular moment in time the buzzer went for lunch yeah, so I got on my motorbike, rode into into Nottingham, uh, went to the Army Recruiting Office, walked in, it was tri-service, Army, right, yeah, right. Army Navy Air Force, woke, walked up to the uh, guy on the Army desk, said, I want to join the Army, mate, and he went, you would make a good grenadier, and I said, what's a grenadier? And he stood up, and he was absolutely immaculate, his name was Vic Axworthy, I'll never forget him. And it weird how you actually yeah. remember him, because yeah. I can still remember yeah. my recruiting officer, yeah. old Dixie D. Yeah, yeah it's just, weird, isn't it? Yeah, and he just said, he said, I am. And I looked at him and he was absolutely immaculate. I went, Dada for me, mate. And he said, right, you know, and we, did, we started a few things. I said, well, I've got to go now because it's like lunchtime, I've got to get back. Um, he said, no problem, book you for another appointment. And so I got on my motorbike, just got back as the buzzer went to start again. And my dad was a foreman there and they used to sit and eat my sandwiches with my dad, you see. Right. He went, where you been? He said, oh, I've just joined the army, dad. And he went, what? I said, yeah, I've just joined the army. I said, well done, son, but your mum's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go and tell my mum. Luckily, I had a motorbike, my dad had a car, and there's no, no mobile phones in them days, was there? So I got home and broke the news to my mum before my dad got home. I said, guess what he's done? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and, and that set me on the path of being in 18 years service in the Grenadier Guards, basically. Cool. Which I loved. Good time? Oh, amazing time. I had a, It suited me. You know, um, if... I don't know how public this is going with trooping now and I was hanging around the wrong sorts. Um, you know, we could have got in a lot of trouble. A lot of my friends at that time yeah. did prison time. Um, as they all did. As, yeah, it was, you know, I was lucky to have that uh, light switch on, basically. Mm. And um, I just it, I just loved it. it I, I just felt at home straight away. Yeah, yeah. It's not a job. The military's not a job. It's a, it's a lifestyle, isn't it? Yeah, um, I mean, how, how do you... Um, I mean, so you went in... Yeah, yeah. What was your regiment? Grenadiers, Grenadier Guards, because he said I'd make a good guardsman. So you did <laughs> and get Nottingham to follow the approach. I did, yeah. Nottingham's a recruiting, uh, uh, recruiting centre for the Grenadiers. I went to Sutton Coalfield, used to do a weekend in Sutton Coalfield, oh. and got on really well with these two lads who were joining the Shield Foresters. They said, Oh, come join the Shield Foresters. I went, No, 
I'm joining the Grenadier Guards, and they didn't know what they were really. And I ended up staying and doing the Grenadier. I've meant to be a Grenadier. Yeah, just yeah. absolutely meant to be a Grenadier. So, what's the difference between okay? Let's, let's take them, the Grenadier and the Sherwood Foresters. I mean, what were your duties? How well, did they well, differ? The, the primary difference is that the Sherwood Foresters are a local regiment. Yeah, um, yeah, and they recruit locally. The Grenadier Guards recruits from certain areas, geographic areas within the, within England. Um, so it's it's wider spread. Yeah, mm. Manchester's a really big recruit material. Nottingham's actually the biggest, and then you have those southerners down London way. You know that uh, a lot of Cockneys. Uh, yeah. Nah, they're Cockneys. Oh, mate, Arsenal fans, goodness, <laughs> and all this sort of stuff, and Spurs fans, and, and and so it's like that. But the primary difference, we do all the stuff that the infantry do. Yeah, absolutely, everything. So all the training. Uh, 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 go on tours, you know, uh, active service, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But we also then do the public service, which is the Troop in the Colour, Buckingham Palace, Tower yeah. London, St James's Palace, so the red coat furry out stuff, which all the women like. So That's the only reason why you best, did. The best of birth. Well, I didn't even know. To be fair, I didn't you even didn't, know. Didn't. I didn't even know. <laughs> that, I didn't even know they did that. I mean, there was a poster at the time, which, which I remember this poster, and I've got it on my fa phone somewhere. You're twice the man in the Grenadiers, and it'd show a picture of the guy in, in combats and a picture of a guy in tunic. Yeah. And it was the same guy pictured in both things. So you're twice the man. Uh, and the thing is about the public duty side, you know, I, I was in Troop in the Colour, and, and the first one I did, the biggest honour you can be is the escort, and it's your colour being trooped. Well, that was the first ever troop colour I did. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, so. How do you get picked for that? Though? Well, it's, it, it, because it's your battalion's turn. So the, co the colour gets changed, I think it's every 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, but, but you troop your colour. Because the whole idea was in battle, when, they, when we used to carry the colour, mm. and we used to fight in the Redcoat Furriats, um, the, 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 the Queen would inspect the colours, you know, because they were your regiment. If you lost your colours, your regiment fell. Oh. Yeah, so it's a really the colours are, are really significant to regiments, all mm. regiments, mm. Um, and therefore you always get the big blokes are on the actual escort, and they'll, they'll have uh, bayonets, and the the, guy, the officer carrying it will have a sword. You defend the colour. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's the that's the big thing about it. Um, and we did the trip in the colour. My first one was was the one, and it was when at the time when uh, the Queen was on horseback. So it was in the 70s, and, yeah. and you had, uh, with them, them days, you had the Grenadiers had two battalions, the Colstein Guards had two battalions, and the Scots Guard had two battalions. So they were all on parade. So the, the, wow. the All Scots parade bit was full, yeah, yeah, effectively, yeah. all the way around. So the marching, Beautiful sight. Oh, amazing. I mean, that, I mean, that was the ultimate, because you had all those battalions on it. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, you had to make sure he was right, because you didn't have a lot of room for manoeuvre. Now, I think it's, it, the, the, there's a lot, lot less. It's still difficult, but there's yeah. a lot, lot less, and, um, and it's a shame. But that's that's mm. that's what that's been our cuts. One of the good things is we've never been amalgamated, right? Yeah, Colonel and Chief Queen, we ain't gonna get amalgamated, no, no. and we're a body. Leave my so. boys alone. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's so uh, you know, and, and um, it's it that it was I just loved it. It just suited me. I, there are two different types of people in the regiment. Mm. Yeah, we had what was called the drillers and the killers. So you had the drillers that love the uh, all the sort of the, the drill and mm. poncing about, and you had the ones that like the combat and all that lot. Well, I was a killer. I did all the all the courses um, for for learning that basically. Oh right. So yeah, I mean, um, I I was um, I joined at the time. I was going to Northern Ireland, um, and I didn't I didn't go on leave from um, my basic training because right. the battalion was in Nor doing Northern Ireland training the last two weeks. And because I hadn't done the full amount of training, when I went over to uh, London Derry, um, I had to go and join the Black Watch. <laughs> That's an Englishman <laughs> in Black Watch. That was worse than the tour. Uh, and, and to do some more training for a couple of weeks. I did that. Then I joined the battalion, and I was in uh, Number One Company. And we was in the Masonic car park, which was the bog side. Yeah, in '77. So '74 was when oh, we had right. the bloody Sunday. So it's very, mm. very raw. I was there at the time of the anniversary. Uh, every Thursday and Friday night you'd have riots because you know that was Dole Day. Yeah, yeah. So they'd get the Dole on a Thursday, go out having a good drink, and then go right, let's beat up a couple of squaddies sort of thing, and attack a patrol. So it was a very active tour. First time the M60, um, which is the machine gun Rambo mm -hmm, carriers, mm -hmm. first time that was used in Northern Ireland was against us because it was a time when um, the fireman strike was going on here. Right. Green goddesses, so they set fire to a derelict building. We had to put the cording in. The Green goddesses went in to put it, uh, put it out, and they opened fire on us with two armor lights on the M60. 
didn't get anybody. We never lost anybody in that tour. Oh, right. Uh, we, they tried to blow us up, they threw grenades over the walls and shot at us on a regular basis, but never got any of us. So cool. it, was, it was a good tour. I mean, 18, you're bulletproof, mate. You, yeah. you don't, I, I can honestly say there's one time when the ears went up on the back of my neck when I thought something was going to happen. Yeah, and all I did was start. We started our targeting, so a few of us felt yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and then that, and I think they must have chickened it a bit because mm. they saw that we switched on, um, and that was the only time I felt. Ooh, you know, the rest of the time it was just a blast. I great. had a job like that once. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It was great. I loved it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was. You know, I was. Uh, I was a security guard at Mothercare. And no, you, you know what it's like. Yeah, it absolutely. Like, I was mate. like, oh, yeah, no. I know. Yeah, I, well, I nearly did that when I left the army. Yeah. I thought, what can I do to get the buzz? You know, what What can I do to get the buzz? I thought, oh, good. Yeah. Uh, but they wouldn't tell me. Apparently, I didn't have enough experience. Oh, bless so, you. Yeah, no, oh, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Let me ask you something, because the, the old Grenadier Guards, well, I mean, all, all the soldiers that yeah. you know, were in the services are immaculate. Yeah. Your boots. Yeah. How, how shiny were they? Well, it, you, you, right from the first day of basic training, you're taught how to wax your boots because you wax them, beeswax them first. So you, you get a burner, you burn them down, you put beeswax on them, then you put layers and layers and layers of polish on them and then start pulling it. And some are good at it and some aren't. I was actually quite good. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I was very lucky because I was one of these people that no matter what I was doing, so if you're, if you're in the field crawling through mud or on parade, yeah. I'd look immaculate. And I don't know how I did it, I just did it. Yeah, with some, with some. <laughs> model, it, it, a model. Well, that, that's a second time times we called the models, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, so I lived up to the name. Oh. There we are. But we had some people, you could put an Armani suit on them and they looked like a bag of crap. Crap. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, one of, the, one of my lads, when I was a platoon sergeant, one of my lads was in it, it was terrible. So I said, right, I'll do your kit. So a platoon sergeant doing a guardsman's kit, you know. So I did his kit and it was immaculate. And he went on parade and got it done because it was, it was a bag of crap. It was just the way he wears it. Some, some people, oh, no! I know, yeah. Some people, <laughs> some people stand properly, don't they? Yeah. And, and they've got that presence and he, he just <laughs> didn't, you know. And it's amazing because he was a pain in the backside to me because I, I was always getting told off for him being in bad, bad order. And I tried everything, I absolutely tried everything. He, 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 he then left, he left the army, and uh, he's now an instructor with the cadets, and he's always putting his kit online to show how immaculate he is. I just sit there laughing my head off thinking, you know. Uh, remember the days. Remember right? the yeah, days, yeah yeah, 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 remember the days. And, and, and it, it, but that's the beauty of it. You get the characters that you get, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was one um, where you learn about different people, because when I was a platoon sergeant, you got 30. 30 blokes in a platoon. Yeah. Uh, and you got some are just, just in, 18, and you got some maybe 26. And I was a uh, platoon sergeant, I think I was about 20, 24, because I, I got promoted mm. very quickly, because yeah. I was good, and <laughs> modestly good. Uh, Modest. Yeah, um, and so you've got to deal with them. Some have come from really rough, tough yeah, backgrounds. Right, right, right. Some, some come from, you know, really, they should be officers, because they've got A-levels and stuff right. like that, but they just didn't want that. Uh, and so you, so you, you learn how to manage and, and lead people of all sorts of, you know, right. you learn the ones you have to shout at, you learn the ones you have to sort of take around the back and say, look, mate, this has got to change. You, you, you learn the ones who you can praise. Yeah. You learn about the ones that if you praise them, you ruin them because they can't take the praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's the subtleties of that because at the end of the day, when you're going to combat, it's got to work. Yeah. So you can be a you can be a big toughy hard hard man if you like, but it ain't gonna work when the combat starts and the fighting starts. Mm. And that that's that's where you learn your craft and your skill, isn't really. it? Right, so let's let's move it on a bit. Mm. Um the Patriotic Fund. Yeah. You you did tours of duty. Yeah. You were out there. Any of yeah. your fellows suffered? Yeah, I've had lost friends. Um I've had people commit suicide as a result of their really? Of their, uh, their toys, in fact, one local, which um, really hit me because I knew him really well. lived lived um, on uh, Lincoln Road, mm. so less than a mile, mile and a half from where I was living at the time. Mm. Saw him reasonably, re reasonably regular. He was one of those boats when he served. You wanted to play poker against because if you had a good hand, you could tell. <laughs> yeah, honestly, honestly, I kid yeah. you not. He could never win at cards because he could. He'd, he'd be playing, and he could tell he got a good hand. When he got a good hand, he could. He'd go, and in the sit up, you see, so you think, right, okay, fold. <laughs> you know, and, and you always win your money off him, it was great. Um, um, and yet, he was suffering the way he suffered. And I saw him a few days before he committed suicide, and I didn't have a clue. Uh, I just didn't, didn't see it. I didn't, just didn't see that he was so distressed that he would go and hang himself. 
um, and that really, really knocked me, knocked mm. me for six. Um, and as a result, I then went on a, a suicide awareness course, uh, right. which the county council were funding at the time. Um, and, and that helped me then look for the signs. What yeah. are the signs? What, what well, it, 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 it's, it's, it's more about how they, how they are and how they act and, and, mm. uh, and what they say and what you have to say, really. Um, and saying, oh, think about your family. Well, they've already done that. It's, yeah, it's irrelevant. So it's about, <laughs> it's about showing them they've got somebody there that, that cares and that mm. they're not on their own, really. And it's about talking to them about things. And, and it's like with the Patriotic Fund, we do a, a drop-in every Monday morning um, at like 10, 10 to 12 every Monday morning, free teas and coffees and bacon butties. <clears throat> and we do that because we don't want it to be at the cost to be a restriction for anybody to come. Um, but, but the biggest benefit for me is you get to know them. So, Squatty, are you all right, mate? Yeah, I'm fine, brilliant, yeah, great. Yeah. But when you see them all the time and you say that, you can tell there's a subtlety in there that actually they're not. And you mm. go, oh, hey, can you, I just want a word with you a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, what's really wrong? And they'll mm. open up to you. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And it's about that. And, 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 and so the talking side to them, is how you get to know them and, and you notice it then, really. Hmm. I think a total stranger, you just ain't going to ever... No, no I don't think they're going to make that connection. I'll tell you one of the things that came up on that course, which fascinated me, absolutely fascinated me, we, we, you know, we, which is the, the, the place in the world that's been people have committed suicide on more than anybody else mm, where? in the world? Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. Oh, really? More people have, have, have killed themselves off Golden Gate Bridge than anywhere else in the world, specific place, right? And there's actually, believe it or not, called a Golden Gate Survivors Club. Yeah, so these are people that jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and survived. Not many of them, but they've got survivors. And every single one of them said as soon as they let go of that rail, they regretted it. Every single one. So you can imagine how many people jump off oh. something around the neck, yeah, and then are like you're there and can't get out of it, yeah and have regretted what they've done. Oh, no, and that's a really frightening uh, thing to me, and that's one of the things that really motivates me mm. to make sure that um, I'm always there to talk to people um, ab about it, you know, um, because if you don't talk about it, and that's why I'm happy to do this. Yeah, I, yeah. I go and see a therapist. I go, actually, I'm, I really must be messed up because I go uh, once a week, yeah? I go once a week. I've been going for a year now, yeah. and I feel that as a person I've developed quite quite a lot, well, oh, a lot, good. massively as a person, mm. uh, but also it's helped me get, get through things. Uh, you know, having, a, having this back problem where I've got to have an operation, it's depressing, but I've not been depressed. When it was cancelled, I could have easily gone into depression, but mm. I wasn't depressed because sure. of the way I tackled it and thought, okay, then nothing to do about it, get on with it. Right. Uh, or, you know, I dealt with it how I needed mm. to deal with it. And, and so it's about things like that. And that's, that's the beauty of the Patriotic Fund. And we have people ranging from suicidal, because I'm dealing with somebody at the moment that I'm in regular contact with, who, who has attempted a couple of times, got kicked out of the army for attempting. Right. Um, and I'm in constant contact with him, talking to him, things like that, to people that just feel a bit lonely. Right, right. You know, the yeah. full spectrum. And, and we've got guys in their early 30s, and we've got a guy who's 94. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we all know, and it's a fact, that isolation, and this is what worries me about this coronavirus, is isolation is a killer. Because mm. uh, people think then that nobody cares, they're on their own, too much time to think. Mm. All these sorts of things can start to happen. Um, and so it's really important that if we know anybody that, that's self-isolating, we keep in touch with them. A phone call, don't have to go and see them. A phone call, how are you doing, mate? You right, know? right. Do you need yeah, anything? Yeah, yeah. It shows there's somebody there thinking about them. Yeah, and yeah. we've said to our lot, you know, because uh, I put a message, it's funny how it changes, isn't it? I put a message out, uh, not yesterday, day before, saying we'll keep going with our uh, Monday breakfast meetings, come if you feel you want to, um, because it's important if, if you want, mm. if you need the company that you come. Then we had the announcement last night, so now we're just talking to uh, the secretary to talk about we're going to have to stop them because we've got a duty of care right, right. and we've got vulnerable people with health yeah. issues so yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if I keep it going and something happens to one of them you'll get one of these near wells want to sue us because of, oh, yeah, yeah. because yeah. we've not done the right yeah. thing so we've got to be careful and I think that's a sad reflection on society to be fair that you've got these people I think it's, a, it's, it's mass hysteria yeah it's massive that's where, that's it's where mass we are yeah. 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 It's I mean, the media's gone mental on it and everything and, well, and I get it I understand yeah, it yeah. But, but they're shocking the media's shocking and, and, and the trouble is We've got people going on Facebook uh, and, and giving opinions and giving advice who aren't experts. Right. 
people are believing it, mm. yeah, and then they're getting worried. Now, okay, if you're worried, I understand it. If you've got health issues and you're worried, I can understand it. But why come on Facebook and say how worried you are? Because all that does is make other people worry. worry yeah. So what is your motivation... Yeah, what is your motivation to go on Facebook and say how worried you are? I think you need to look at yourself a bit. Yeah. Because you're not doing anything, anybody. It's not putting your head in the sand. No. It's about looking at what the issues are and tackling with them and dealing with them mm. in, in, a, in a pragmatic way. Because that's the only way we'll do it. Panicking, running around. You know, if you're worried and stressed, it actually reduces your immune system. So good on you. You're doing yourself a lot of favours. So don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. One thing that's interesting is, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Queen Victoria set up the Royal Patriotic Fund in 1854. I didn't know that. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, came up for that. Now, Lloyd's, Lloyd's Patriotic Fund yeah. has been running since 1803, I think oh, it is. Okay. So it's, it's amazing. But what the reason why I mention that is because Queen Victoria set it up and she actually turned around and said to the public, what can you give? to help our soldiers. She yeah. was genuinely concerned. Yeah. Um, but that filtered down to the likes of us to support. Yeah. And it wasn't until, I think it was 1907, mm. that the, uh, the state then decided, do you know what? Too many of our boys uh, are yeah, yeah. you know, suffering, their families. Yeah. 170,000 people were supported by the Patriotic Fund. Yeah, man. Right, yeah. Uh, oh, so when we when we looked at mm. the, the Patriotic Fund back in, what was it? Um, two, not, 2003. Us. Us, yeah. Yeah, two, 2008, sorry. 2008. 2008, yeah. yeah. How did that all come about? Well, basically, I got approached by um, Patrick Mercer. Because mm. um, I was at the time, I was the chairman of the New York Business Club, um, and he knew that I knew a lot of businesses. Mm. And he said, look, we've got this situation... Um, we think we should set something up. What do you think? So, oh, great idea. I'll, I'll come on board. And because um, I knew a lot of um, the, the business people in the town, um, I got hold of some of them. John Coles is one yeah, of them. Yeah, John was he's, he's, he's a very, very uh, wealthy man. Mm. Nothing to do with the military in any way, shape or form, but just passionate about Newark and about the troops. Um, and and a, a great man, amazing man. And he's been amazing for us. And we had a lance corporal called Nick Davis um, who had, uh, had been blown up in Afghanistan. He was, yeah. Yeah, he died a couple of times on the way uh, way back as well. Um, it was touch and go. He was being looked after at, um, at Sully Oak. Um, but his mum and dad, who weren't wealthy, uh, couldn't afford to keep going backwards and forwards to, to Sully Oak to go and see him. And so um, I got to John Coles. I said, look, John, we've got a situation. Do you know any business businessmen? Because he knows them. Mm. You know, you know. It was my link into the big business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know any businessman that can can help out? And he says, "I'll send me driver around, get them in a hotel um, near near the hospital, and um, we'll we'll look after them." So we did that, and it meant that they could be near their son um, while he was going through what he was going. Mm. And and then we said, "Look, this is this is not going to be the first time. There's going to be more." So initially, then we set up really to look after the families mm. of of the servicemen. Because we felt that the servicemen, as they come back injured, was being well looked after. And they were. There's no mm. doubt they were. Uh, but then as it developed, um, they, we then started getting the mental health issues and, and, and the, the additional things to a, right. to a wound. And, and that's where I believe the system is not geared up to look after. I mean, if you see a bloke with his legs missing, oh, you're right, mate. If you see a bloke being uh, disruptive and maybe aggressive... Oh, he's a bit of a twat. Yeah, and mm. actually he's suffering. Mm. Um, and we don't know what he's seen yeah, and what why he's done. Do it. Yeah, and yeah. We don't know why. So, so it, and I think there's a, a term called hidden wounds uh, for it. And, 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 you know, they're just as important as the ones that's lost Ooh, the legs. Yeah, without you know, doubt. Just important. Mm. And, and they're the ones that are committing suicide. Um, and so we then said, right, no, we're going we're gonna to change what we are, because we was a fund, we weren't a charity at the time. Mm. We're going to change what our remit is. We're going to look after injured service personnel and their families. So we've always been family orientated with the, now we look after the service personnel as well. Uh, and that's what, that's what we do. Um, we've never um, gone for um, government funding. Yeah, and I've got, I've got a reason for that. A couple of reasons, actually. The first one is if you go for funding, you end up ticking boxes. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And I see it all the time. Of and this, I'm not a fan of major, of the major charities, because uh, they chase funding. 
Whereas actually, they should be looking after the men. And they have all these reserves and these men here and women are suffering. Uh, we self-fund, we, we get our own funding um, and we don't have to tick boxes. So we don't have to account for anybody because when you get government funding, you have mm. to say, how many are you looking yeah, after? Yeah, right, right. So you're mine, you're mine. Mm. And they keep hold of them, even though it's to the detriment of them because it might work for some, but it doesn't work for all. Right. Whereas we go, right, okay, let's try that one over there, combat stress. No, it didn't work. Try that one over there. Oh, it didn't work. Try that one. It's worked. Individually, you know, we signpost, we help. Sure. They come back to us. Because they, they come to that Monday, That's nice. you know, they come to, mm. or they get on with their life, which is even better to be fair. Yeah, oh yeah. Because yeah. they get on with their life, like Nick Davis now, he's got a couple of kids and he's, he's happy and, you know, he yeah, goes for his moments, of course he does, it, but but he's, he's, he's got as far as he Well, has. he knows he's got a support system in place, doesn't he? Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. I can remember doing, when I had the magazine uh, locally and we did the the uh, story on Nick. Yeah. It was amazing, amazing yeah. story. Yeah, you know, it, like is. Say, it is. Him losing his life. You know, and, yeah. oh, and then bring, bringing him back yeah. and everything else, and where he is now today. Yeah, it's amazing. But I mean, we've done that with a couple of people, haven't we? Yeah, we've got, yeah. We've got Nathan. We've got Nathan. He's doing really well for himself now. I mean, you know, he lost both his legs. We've done. We've written, have you seen the book we've written? We wrote a. We've written a book. Yeah, you know? I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, that, that did well for us because the um, uh, uh, W H Smiths put it on their shelves and mm. said we'd get all the money for it. So we, plus we sold them ourselves for a fiver, and it's yeah. a good read for a fiver. You know, because I've written in it, basically. No, no, there's some good... I'll tell you what, you need an handkerchief. If you, oh, if you yeah, read the book, yeah. you need an handkerchief. Yeah. It's a great book. And it's not just from the soldiers, it's from the wives, from the kids, from the mothers. I think that's know. what people don't realise, the, the, the whole knock-on effect throughout the family or mm. families. Yeah, massive, isn't it? Massive. You know, it, 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 the divorce is quite high in the forces. Mm. It's very rare that... Uh, I've got some mates who are still married, which is, like, amazing. But uh, particularly those that have uh, suffer from post traumatic stress, they go for you know it has to be a really resilient relationship because they can be really nasty and say really horrible things because they, they hit out the people they love. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and as a result of that, we get there's lots of divorces and then you get breakups and you know and uh, I need to dispel another myth as well about these homeless homeless soldiers and these thirty thousand being banded around. It's nonsense. We know oh, it's really? not. Oh yeah. There's loads of double counting, triple counting, quadruple counting going on. I did an I did an experiment on me and my regiment spread out all all over the country, and I, and I put on Facebook, can you go to your local authority and find out how many how many um, uh, veterans are homeless? Yeah, I know how many we've got in Newcastle. We're a big district. How many have we got? got? None. Oh really? None. Yeah. So you know, so you you might have in the hundreds and, and you shouldn't have any of course you shouldn't but one of the things about homelessness in itself is you don't know the circumstances of why they're homeless right. also you can't count somebody who just left his girlfriend or his wife and then you're going to sleep on a settee for a couple of weeks as homeless you, you, you know they go back again so there's all this going yeah, on yeah. if they've got mental health issues we you know we've got i think we've got it varies in new we've, we've won awards new the sure district council won awards about their homeless homelessness thing it, five, ten, five, ten, the guy. But but there's a f core five really, and we've owned them. But they wreck the home and don't want to be in the home, and they've got real severe mental health issues. So the homeless, because you can't own them. Right, right. It's not because we don't want to. We have the facilities to be able to do it. Mm. It's just that the mental health issues is so complex, and we've put in all the support in place. But if you're an alcoholic, you can't force them to go and do something. No. I think that. I can understand why, because it's all when we used to stick people in mental asylums. And, oh, and yeah. there so this has all been created because of that. But you can't force somebody who's an alcoholic to go and see somebody. Sure. You know, and, yeah. and so you get all this sort, sort of thing. Sorry, my back so You get all this sort of thing that, that um, it makes it complex. Mm. So all these people that sit on their ivory tower going, oh, it's disgraceful that we've got a squatty homeless. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, but actually... What's the circumstances behind right, it? Right, right. There's actually a grenadier in London who's homeless, right? Mm -hmm. And the lads, because we're a, a, a London yeah. regiment, because that's Buckingham Palace and all that sort of thing, they see him, they've offered him jobs, homes. He's not, he's happy. He doesn't want to live Some in that Some people will live that you way, don't they? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he couldn't settle down having been in the army. You know, it's his choice. So, mm. so I, the, all this numbers that's been banded around is so they can get funding. And I find that quite appalling, to be fair. Mm. Um, and it's, it's a lot of it's anecdotal, so I can't prove it, but I, w I will not put anything in a major charity. No. 
No, I, I've got my own no. issues. I, 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 I believe that if you assign yourself and you want to help that charity, yeah. you do that because you want to do it. Exactly. Don't expect any payment. Exactly. Don't expect any salaries or anything yeah. else. Now, yeah. I get it that there are huge organisations, but when somebody's earning phenomenal hundreds of, of money, hundreds of thousands and you've got pounds. people on the ground yeah. that need that money. Oh, for heroes, you've got millions and millions and millions of pounds in reserve. Really? Yeah, millions. Yeah. Royal British Legion, millions of pounds in reserve. Millions. They're closing some um, hotels down, which is what he'd go and use for cheap, cheap accommodation. Now. They're closing them down. They've got millions of pounds in reserve. You'd think they'd buy one, wouldn't you? Well, they, 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 they own them. And that's what oh, they own them. Oh, they're, they're closing them down. Yeah, yeah. Because um, there's a big, big stink on about it, isn't it? So, you know, Royal British Legion do a great job. But what happened is you then got this where they all go to London. They've all got their quarters in London. Why in London? Yeah, exactly. One of the most expensive places to be. Yeah, yeah. Have yeah, have their quarters in London. That's a lot of money that can be spent on what it needs to be spent yeah. on. Now. You know, you can you, you can work from home. Think, well, you we, can we, now. we employed somebody. The patriotic fund employed somebody. We had a, a coordinator, um, and she did a good job. She was she was good. Um, Maureen, she did a really good job. But we our finances because of the um, Brexit. Mm. Um, a lot of charities started to suffer in terms of uh, getting funding. Funding in, yeah. And we we started to suffer on it, and so we had to make some tough choices and reduced our hours down to. Um, by 50% and then she found a job and, and left and, and what happens now we not one of us are paid we're all, mm. all volunteers and, and my, my uh, secretary Mac Mallard and myself we, we deal with welfare you know because really it's about signposting so we right. can do that so every penny that we raise goes to the service users yeah, 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 we rent a place, we rent the Bowls Club, New, New Town Bowls Club, mm -hmm. and they're big up for them. They've been amazing with us. They, they, they really look after us. Um, and so we, we're there, um, and it's great, and we have our drop-ins there. Whenever we have an event that's not too big, because it's not the biggest of places, sure. we'll have it there, so they benefit from the bar. Mm. We have a barbecue there once a year, and they benefit from the mm. bar. Um, and so it's, it's reciprocal, you know, we try and help them as much as we can. Um, and, and they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. They have all sorts of charities there as well. MS Society go there. Oh, right, I didn't realise yeah, yeah. yeah. so Oh, they have loads. They have, they have loads loads of different different yeah. societies use it. I think there's a bereavement, at, you know, like when you've lost your wife, after yeah. 50 years or whatever it is. People like that uh, meet there and all this sort of stuff. So it's a really good... And they're a charity in themselves, mm. and, and they're, they're really good. Um, so it's all about getting to, to, together here. Right? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. It, all this about the government should pay the government. No, no. They're going there to serve us, the right. soldiers, the, the, the forces, you know, to serve us, to keep us safe. We have an obligation as society to look after them. Yes, the government should do their bit. Yes, they should put things mm. in place. But actually, so should we. No, I you know, totally agree. And, and, I mean, and for so, me, that, that's a big, yeah. big pushing point. Yeah, it, it, you know, so all these whinges about, you know, the government should do it all. No, they shouldn't. No, absolutely not. We should do yeah. it. It's our responsibility. They've allowed you to walk around freely. Yeah, and have and an live opinion. your life. And have an and opinion, have an opinion which, yeah. which I disagree with, but, you know, you're, <laughs> you're entitled to it. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the things about squaddies, you know. We will fight, we'll fight tooth and nail to give people their right to, to, to do what they want and believe what mm. they want and say what they want, but sometimes it really pisses us off. <laughs> when they yeah. abuse that right and talk absolute rubbish, you know. Well, I mean, it, it brings everything round nicely for a for a closure on this. Um, because you've mentioned the fact that you know you take no money, you know it's it purely voluntary and everything else. Mm. How else can we help? What 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 do we need to do in order to get this uh, the, the message out? What worries me is there's still um, ex forces um, out there that don't know about us, local that don't know about us. They're going through desperate times. Yeah. Um, they're uh, sitting on the end of their bed crying, thinking there's no hope, nobody cares, nobody, nobody will help them. And, and, and that's not true. And, and if we can reach out more and, and more people learn about us and see actually, you know, we are really friendly. And, and one of the beautiful things about the, the Monday morning, you've got that massive age range, but when they're together, they're all 18. You know, they're all, they're all, they're all, they're all 18. All gone through that know. training together. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah, just no, it's amazing. Yeah. And we've got, we've got tri we've even let the RAF come in, you know. So, you know, it's tri-service and it's brilliant. And their banter's great. And it's like being in the naffy and, you know, without yeah. the fights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were the good old days. Oh, they were the good yeah, old days, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, 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 and 
it's it's a brilliant charity, and mm. obviously I wouldn't say that because I'm the chairman. But it, it, what makes it brilliant is not is not just the, the volunteers, and we've got some really cracking volunteers, mm. and a big thank you to them. But actually, some of the service users are also volunteers. Oh, cool! You know, and they and then when we've helped them and they've got through their desperate times, they'll they'll go out deliberately to give back. Yeah, not yeah, all yeah. do, but we're not after that. You know, some some feel they, they they want to, some don't. Fine, we don't judge. Yeah, we just mm. get on with it, and and it's great, and and that's uh, I've, I'm proud. That's mm. I walk round like that. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, We're cool. doing a great job, um, and helping local people. So every every pound local is to local people. So what do you need us to do? Put our hands in our pockets? Uh, what, well, what, yeah, what, absolutely. What well, yeah. we all this funding because we what, what we've done. We've actually come come across some some money we just recently. We had a very very generous donation. So what it's meant we can do now is um, expand what what um, we're we're able to help with. So um, we're now because um, the NHS and it, the mental health in the NHS is not brilliant for forces. We've now got two local therapists that are used to working with people uh, that served. One of them has worked with special forces and things right. like that. So the, the, she's she's used to working with military. She, it's the one I go to, so I know she's good. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she puts up with me. Um, and, and so we could now pay for them to go for that ther- uh, therapy uh, and, and we'll pay for them to go for so many sessions if they can't afford to keep going we'll mm. pay if they can afford to start putting some in we ask that that's good because yeah. it keeps us going so it's not all about giving it's about self-help as well sure uh, and just for the record I pay for my own because you do get accused you know yeah, about, I can imagine. of only yeah. doing it for yourself yeah, yeah. I've never used the patriotic fund not once even mm. when I went into depression I got myself out of it mm. you know, so. that's good uh, but yeah, it's so, so money for that. We also, because of the isolation issue, although now Corona has just got to put the mockers on it, we, we've started to be able to, to put coaches on to go go right. away. So go to the um, Tuxford, to the Air Museum. We're, we're looking at going over to um, Belgium next year to, to go around the war graves. Um, yeah, and or around like Passchendaele. That. Passchendaele and, yeah. and also maybe even do a Dunkirk tour or whatever. Wow. You mm-hmm. know, um, So it's, give, it's given us the ability to be able to do that. Um, and what it's also done, it's raised um, people's morale because we were struggling, we were getting down on the funds. Uh, as trustees, was looking at you know how long can we survive for, what we're going to do, how we're going to close it down. It got yeah, that yeah. serious, um, but we don't have to do that now. And it's raised morale, and they, they, we've got a, a fundraising team, and they're going for it now because because before we, the funds were that low, they had to do everything on a, on a shoestring budget. Right now we can say right, here's some money to make it a better event. People come along, enjoy it more. Mm. Yeah, we make more money, so the money we we put in, we get back. Plus, we make more money um, because it's a better event, and people love it, and they're talking about it. So more people are coming to the event. Mm. So it started a, a momentum going the right way. So give us the money, we'll use it for them. Yeah, and the, all the service users because we get financial difficulties, homeless mm. and like that. But it's not for very long. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So how can people give? We've got a website, so newpatrioticfund.co.uk, so we've gone there, and I think there's a donation, a donation on there. They can contact me uh, directly, and I'll give them the bank account. They can put it in. Through but, the website? I think you can do it through the website. But what, 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 we're, what we're in the process of setting up at the moment is a uh, direct debit. So if you want to donate £2 a month or £5 a month, mm. we can just set up a direct debit, and then it's just going in. And that's brilliant for us because it's an, it's an income. Yeah, yeah. I've sure. been doing it for the Beaumont House for years because it was a it would rather keep stop coming to ask me for money. Yeah, I don't mind giving it. Yeah, there. I'll set up a diary. Yeah, not you it. again. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it's done, isn't it? Yeah. So so they've got that money, and I don't know. It's it's it's, it's a pint, five, isn't it? It's just just but short that's, of a pint. That's the issue, isn't it? Yeah. When you bring it down into uh, reality terms, a cup of coffee. Yeah. You think, yeah. well, I can do that, a cup of coffee. Yeah. Do you know, oh, I feel good today yeah. because I've yeah. I've put that to the patriotic society. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but but if you think about a it, a pint a month, so a fiver a month, yeah, and, and to us, that would be absolutely massive mm. if, if you get 100 people do that. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. 100 people doing a fiver a month, yeah, you don't, you don't miss a fiver a no, month. No, you don't no. notice a fiver a month. There's no way. Mm. And you won't go without that pint because you make some... Use of you do something uh, else. Well, <laughs> you do that five, yeah. Oh, I won't bother with that apple then, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever, but you know, it's it, and that's what we would love it if people would start doing that. Um, I'm a will writer, and uh, it'd be great if people leave it in the will if they want to leave a donation. 
um, in the world to sort of say, you know, £1,000 to the Patriotic Fund, brilliant. I can make sure they have the world that does that. Good. Um, so everything, you know, right. anyway, you'll get that money. Because what we will do, we will expand as we have the money to be able to expand. Yeah, sure. We're only at the level we are because of the money we've got. Mm -hmm. um, but, but rest assured, it's all been spent on local people. And Good. that's to me. It's the spirit of Newark, the Spitfires. We, we raised two Spitfires during the Second World War, more than any other town of our size. You wow. Know? Yeah, so it's a good, this is a, a, a lot very, of choice, this is a patriotic town. We are. Uh, and, and that's what the beauty of it. I love the people here. They're amazing. They're amazing. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap it up there. We'd like to say thank you very much to Keith Gully yeah. and the Patriotic uh, Fund. Now, if you... Listen to what Keith said. If you want to donate, yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, you go through on the website, you find the Patriotic Fund, Patriotic Fund Newark, isn't it? No, no, no. no. Sorry, yeah, it's Newark Patriotic Fund. Newark Patriotic Patriotic Fund. Fund. Also, we've got a Facebook page. So, so Newark Patriotic Fund Facebook page, join. Uh, we have events. So, if you want to come to our Black Tie Day, for example, um, which we hope is still going to be on, it's not until October anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, take part. It's brilliant. We have a great night. We have a great night. We're flag waving, land of open glory, all that sort of stuff. You have to put up with a speech by me for about five minutes. So I've just been there, unsold it. <laughs> but it's a good fun night. It's, it's yeah, a good it's fun good night. Fun. It's yeah. a really good night. Well, that's about it, guys. So yeah, if you want to support these guys, there was a poster, a very famous poster that came out way, way, way back in the days, and it said, "The patriotic, uh, the patriotic fund. What will you give?" I'm going to resurrect that poster and we're going to sell that and we're going to give that money to the Patriotic Fund. Not very much. That's what we're going to do. So, we'll see you next time. Thanks ever so much for watching. See you later.